Okay, great. <clears throat> All right, well, welcome everyone. It's um, it's the second today. I've dropped the um, URL to our page with a schedule in the chat. This is the same as the email that I sent around. And um, today, Eric is going to introduce a data-driven project. I don't know much about it, so I've referred to it as your mysterious project, so I'm excited <laughs> to hear what you have to say. Um, I just wanted to highlight a couple of things. I, I've updated the links to the past recent meetings. I actually, there's been a little activity on the YouTube site for some of these where people outside the organization for certain topics have become interested. One topic was the DSAT one, was a popular one. People from various places in the world are interested in that. But, um, <clears throat> I just wanted to say that I've updated the links and uh, for the old website on the landing page for this one, if anyone were interested in some of the old materials, now this is this is actually over the past three and a half years, we've had three versions of the website. I like to uh, restlessly keep improving it and um, but we can get to the last one from this link and on that one is a link to the third one. They're all still up. So if anyone wants to revisit those materials. Um, for the NLP talk, Magda, if you had a talk you would like to share, I'll link link it up here. I didn't notice one in the chat. And the same thing, Joe C, if, if you had some things you wanted to share, if you'll drop them in the chat, even today, I'll, I'll get them up there. But I'll continue doing it this way. I had envisioned making um, pages but I think it's easier to do it this way and just makes more sense to do that. Next week, I wanted to highlight no meeting. Um, and then the week after that, I believe we firmed up and we'll have uh, Hayden come and um, talk to us about a binomial regression analysis that he's done on, and he'll tell us about his earwig and um, uh, woolly apple aphid uh, experiments that he completed last year and is just uh, analyze. He's done some model building and probably we can have a discussion about the best way to present this because it was quite a complicated analysis. But um, I have to leave halfway through this meeting and then for those of you who will be in the boot camp, I'll join at 530 in the boot camp. So apologies for that. I've been summoned to a meeting that I couldn't say no to. So uh, with um, without further ado, I'm going to pass over the screen to Eric, who will introduce himself and uh, introduce the project he's been working on. Eric. You're muted, I think. Yeah, sorry. Okay. There we go. Um, yeah, so thanks for these. I've, I've, I've been planning to to do some be more participative in this in this group, but I haven't had the chance so far. And um, in 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 the project I'm working at here at Harper, like not non teaching or or research related, um, we are working with some of the the teachers in the in the in the veterinary vet school, and um, they are doing an an experiment. I will talk more about it um, later. It, it was mysterious to me as well, to be honest. Um, and they performed these experiments throughout the the summer, and finally got their um, their data. And I offered to to help them because it it was part doing with um, helping a company, and that's that's the the contact I I made. So I kind of felt like a yeah, uh, I felt it was interesting and. Uh, something I could help with. Um, I will talk you through the experiment. It's nothing too complicated, but to be honest, um, it, it makes you think like um, when you are doing this kind of, of, of work, you really need to, to, to understand. It's not um, send me a file and I'll, uh, I'll do the analysis. Um, that's probably what we all thought at the beginning and, and it hasn't been the case at all. So we'll see that I haven't done as much as I thought. But maybe I, um, uh, maybe I'm, I'm open after this this um, session to some suggestions on how to to approach it. So I'll 
Well, um, start because the, the, the very first thing that I notice is when we do lab work, uh, we, we, we have a certain way of um, capturing uh, our data. And, it, and, in, and in this case, it was exactly what, what happened. Um, they were doing um, experiments in the lab and they were logging their data. And at the end of the day, uh, we ended up with, um, with an Excel file, which was not tidy. So, so that was the first thing I noticed. And, um, and that's when, when I suggested Ed, like for this, this session, I thought like, maybe talk about a little bit about tidy data. So I have only two slides, very basic, and I think most of you already know it, but, um, since we're in 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 the bootcamp stage as well, and um, the tidy data is one of the of the concepts, I just thought like um, yeah, just show how a, a real case can can look. And um, here I have just a quote about uh, I think we all kind of seen this before that the as a data scientist we we spend most of the time um, cleaning the data and preparing the data and just a very small percentage on actually doing the analysis or the simulations and, and that. So this is from, from a 2003 book, and I think that's that's something we can we can all um, relate to. So the, the tidy data concept, uh, it has been around for, for a while now, and, and it was formulated by um, Hadley Wickham in, in his paper. And um, there is like just a small figure at, at the bottom um, kind of showing uh, the, the 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 work the workflow or the, the way um, we normally work with with data. So, so we normally um, would import our, our file, make sure it's tidy and ready to to be used, and then is when we start to uh, visualize it, um, transform it if necessary. We can start creating models. We we can start extracting. Uh, information out of the data actually in in that that stage, which can can take a little while, and and it, I, I like how it's um, represented that as as cyclical because um, it's very rare that you do only one linear thing and and you end with a, with a result. You normally have to go back and check uh, quite a few times, so that's um, that's part part of the process and. Um, uh, and again, I think we can all relate with with that. So, just in case um, anyone uh, doesn't know how how the tidy data should be presented, here um, is just a very basic uh, figure um, uh, again from from this book, the data science. And basically, what it tells us is that each column. Um, should represent a variable, and and this is very important. And and in an example, I'm gonna show you uh, in a minute. We can we can see how how easily we can forget that, especially if we are out in the in the fields or or in the lab, um, and we are not not really thinking about the the how are we gonna do the analysis. Um, we create uh, these kind of formats that um, at the end of the day. That they are not tidy and they, they they will not be helpful to to use for for analysis. So the the very first thing is to have uh, uh, each column uh, to represent a variable, and the rows would represent the observations. So this is also called like a long type of of format. So we we'll, will end up with quite a few observations um, depending on on the experiment. But it's definitely something um, different than the things we we see sometimes, which are just many columns, and the columns could be representing anything from a variable, from an observation, from a sub observation, or comments, or things like that. So these kinds of changes that that concept, and then we will have um, each cell of our table should should be a value. Uh, it can be categorical, continuous, um, factors, but it, it, each cell should represent a value and should be associated with its variable and its observation. So it, it, it sounds very simple, and uh, as I said before, but in practice, um, it, it's really easy to forget and just start um, 
collecting data as, um, as we think is more, more convenient at the moment. So this is just an example of the of the Excel file that I, I received and um, I um, was asked to to help with the analysis of of this data. Uh, probably this is one a, a bit of my responsibility as well because I, I I asked for the for the data even before understanding the the experiment. Um, they they told me what it what it was, but the the actual protocol they sent sent me. Um, later, which might change the way I, I approach the, the problem, but um, I, I will talk to you talk about that um, later. So as we can see here, um, and I can see why they, they did it this, this way, collect, collect the data. So, so they have uh, each spreadsheet has um, a treatment, is what we can see at the bottom. And then they have four different um, repetitions for the columns and a control. And they did it for 24 hours and 48 hours. So as we can see here, like the, the columns, they don't necessarily represent uh, individual variables. Sometimes we have more than one variable for, for each column. Um, the rows are definitely not uh, only observations, so so we have some some comments there, and the the positives, controls, and negatives are are not particularly clear because the positive control is like one section of the of the of the column, but then it changes for the for the next one. And so yeah, well, I think at this point we can all agree that it would be very difficult to analyze this. Um, in R or, or in Python or, or in any other tool that, that we use. So one of the first things that I did was like try to work it out in such a way that it would represent more um, the tidy data concept that we are all familiar with and that um, we have seen in the bootcamp as well. So here, what I did was to have a column for each of the variables, and it's not even clear which which variable I'm, I'm trying to to represent. Um, but in the left, there is two types of bacteria that have been tested in with different treatments. Um, the ones that are at the bottom in the in the sheets of the of the Excel file. So what I did is what well, I put all of that together. So I had now one two three four five uh variables so therefore my five columns and then i put all the observations um there so if i scroll down i will basically have condensated these four sheets from the from the excel file in just one single um page so this makes it much more easier to handle and if i export this to to R, then I can start uh, working on it, subsetting, uh, filtering, cleaning, um, data wrangling, all of those um, things that we are familiar with or that we are starting to get familiar with. Um, so in, my, in, my, in my case, I've, I haven't done this for a while, so I'm really taking it slow, but really enjoying um, doing it again. So as a good practice, uh, every time we, we create a tidy data file, we also should include a, a dictionary. So specifying what each variable represents, if it's a factor, how many factors, if it's a continuous variable, if it's um, a category. So it's always good to think in the in the users. And especially if we're going to share this with, uh, with other colleagues, um, so we can make sure that uh, everyone understands what is in this file and how 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 should be um, represented or worked with. So now the the experiment, the, the mysterious, not really that mysterious, but it's in, interesting, and it's a it's a local company that is trying to study the impact of nutraceutical extracts on the development of 
canine oral bacteria biofilms. And this has been done in vitro, so not, not, not with animals. Uh, I'll explain a little bit more uh, in the next slide. So basically, they are trying to identify specific supplements, treatments um, from, the, from, the, from the literature or that they have worked in the past. And they're trying to find which one and at which dilution will prevent the development of biofilm in, in the structures of um, canine oral bacteria. So what they did was to order two isolates of, of bacteria, two different types of bacteria that are representative of the of the um, canine structure. And they did in vitro um, repeats in, in the lab. So I'm gonna try to explain um, explain it in a couple of, of slides. Um, to, be, to be honest, as I mentioned before, this was presented to me after sending the data. So I had to make some assumptions that then I realized that they were not probably entirely correct. So I need to go back and um, reassess that. But uh, I, I guess it's part of the of the of the job and um, lesson learned next time uh, it would be first thing to to ask. So basically what we have here and it will also make sense why they collected the, the data like that is because this is a physical representation of the tray that they used in the in the laboratory. So they had a tray in the laboratory with holes in, in it and they prepared a solution of bacteria broth. So then what they did is that each row, A, B, C, D, um, and so forth, each one represents a dilution level. What this means is that, for example, from the cells two, three, and four, they used a one, two dilution. So they selected a treatment and they put the bacteria broth at a one, two ratio. Then they diluted it each time. So, so then in the B cell, it was a one four dilution. In the next one, it was a one eight and so forth. So every time they were diluting it at the same ratio. So it, like in, in the experimental design, that's something that uh, I'm still trying to, <laughs> to work here. I'll probably you, you will help me because that was not the way I, I understood it at the, at, the, at the beginning. And then they did another set of dilutions, one in five. So again, starting with one in five, in the row A, and they and then diluted it each time. So one in twenty-five and one in hundred twenty-five, and like that. And same for the for the last last one. So they were having this tray with the bacterial broth, a treatment for each tray, and a dilution. And then they were checking it twenty-four hours after incubation, and then forty-eight hours. And what they measured was the turbidity, which is an indication of the of the um, of the growth, and that is a, the, the the continuous data, the the, the dependent um, variable, because we want to see which of these combinations of treatment and dilution help prevent that development. So these are the four treatments that they use, um, green tea, spirulina, um, beetroot, and ascophilium. And at the end of the day, they decided going for the one, two dilution and one, six dilution. So they filling four of the first um, holes, holes in the tray with a one, two dilution of the bacteria and the green tea treatment, and then they, they diluted it eight times. The starting one at one to ratio and the other one at one six ratio. At the extremes of the, of the columns, we have like a positive control and a negative control. So one of them is just bacteria. So it's just uh, 
the bacteria without anything. So we would expect that one to grow as the as as, as bacteria would normally normally grow. And what we are trying to see is how the treatment and at what point of the dilution of the treatment it prevents that growth. So we are basically comparing um, each each table that we see here has its own positive and, and negative. So each of them has to be compared against it while being diluted. So again, that was not completely clear to when when I first started looking at this to to be honest, but now now it makes a lot of sense. But again, it probably changed um, the approach that uh, I, I, I might take. So uh, ideas for analysis, uh, to be honest, at the beginning, I thought like maybe an um, linear, well, linear models would be the, the first thing to to think about that came to my mind or or even um, an ANOVA. To be, be, even before looking at the data, when when they were explaining me what they did, um, in, in my head, I, I was imagining some kind of a, a ANOVA, like trying to see the, the differences of each treatment against um, a variable, a, a, a fixed variable. But then when they started also explaining how it's for two different types of bacteria and every time it's diluted and the treatments are separate, so that I start thinking about mixed, mo mixed models, for example, if we have some Randolph, the random effects um, there that, that can can affect the the growth or the development of the biofilm. And because the way they they recorded the, the data, um, so instead of the actual value of, of the dilutions, they were recording it as A, B, C. So I thought like there were more um, categorical variables like with, with factors um, than continuous. So I even thought like maybe it's not just a, a linear mixed model, but can be a generalized um, linear model or even mixed uh, model. I was hoping to have uh, some some answers by now. Uh, unfortunately, it hasn't been the the case yet because uh, just earlier this week I, I received the, the the protocol and I, and I was reading through it, having having a better understanding. What I did was to um, create this tidy uh, tidy format spreadsheet and start looking at data in R, um, playing around with some uh, visualizations just to have it more clear in, in my head. It definitely make, makes more sense now. And um, I just have, no, to be honest, I haven't even started to to, to apply the, the the models and and to see the, to quantify the, the assumptions to to check for the for residuals and and normality, so so that's something that I have in mind to do over the next um, yeah hopefully days, but more more be more a week or so. So so yeah, that's that's where I am at at the moment. I don't know if any have any any comments or questions, and I'm I'm happy to show you what I've done in art so far. Some of the of the visualizations, trying to to follow, um, yeah, the, the guidelines, or or at least I I hope so. Thank you, Eric. Um, I'm just gonna say a few comments, and then I have to go to my meeting, and then you can carry on. Um, one question I have when you're talking about this kind of experiment is um, the 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 um, turbidity that they have measured and they get a continuous variable. I think uh, I have a couple of things that I want to throw out there. I don't know the answer, so this is an, an honest question like I would ask to the person who collected this data is um, <clears throat> if it really is a continuous variable, I mean, certainly you could say it's continuous because they've measured something. Is it uh, on a scale with boundaries zero to one? Um, and, and another question I have is, 
are we sure we're interested in um, differences in that continuous variable? For example, um, if they've measured it, I, I think I spotted like three decimal places of accuracy. Um, are, are we interested in the difference between 0.225 and 0.226, is that an interesting difference? Or are we interested in the difference between uh, 0.3 and 0.4? Is that an interesting difference? Or, or maybe uh, the most interesting difference would be something below 0.1 and something bigger than 0.1. That would be an interesting difference. I think, um, I mean, if it were me and somebody brought me the data set, you made me chuckle a little bit when you said, uh, you know, here, here's all my data, please, and um, this will be really easy for you. Um, I'm available tomorrow morning for a meeting. It's a classic, <clears throat> but um, I think it's important to understand what they, what information they actually want to learn. Scientists know this information, but they often find it um, exceedingly difficult to articulate it, and you have to tease it out of them. <laughs> so that's what one of the questions I had for you. Do you know the answer to any of that stuff? Uh, no, no, to be honest, not, not entirely. I have a much better idea now. And uh, so, yeah, the, this, the, the continuous variable is that they're measuring um, turbidity, which can be related with the, with the growth, with the biofilm growth. So it's not di directly related. And um, yeah, so the precision seems to be quite high because the way they measure it. But I don't think we're, or they are interested in those 0.26 versus 0.2. No, I don't think they are either. I, I don't think they are either. They are just really after um, trying to find out in comparison in comparison with the positive uh, control if the treatment limits the growth uh, development. Yeah, I get the I get the question. Uh, some uh, language that I would say if, uh, a thing that I would also do is I would ask the researchers if they uh, previously published an analysis of this that they could share with you or if they could give a similar paper from their own journals that they could share with you. But here's some language for you. Um, the dilution series is, is called that dilution series and they're typically analyzed by a, a type of mixed effects models called a hierarchical model. Okay, I gotta go. I'll see you guys later. Okay, thanks. Ed. Yeah, so I don't know if anyone else has any comments. And um, as I said, it, it's nothing particularly special. I'm, I'm sure all of you know what I will show you. It's a basic ggplots, but just, um, yeah, just to, at least it helped me to, to understand what, what was going on. So you're happy for me to to, to go through it? Yeah, sure. I'm, I'm wondering whether in this experiment we've got any explanatory variable that is truly continuous. Yeah, no, that, that, that's a really good point. And I've been trying to, yeah, to, to be honest, I, I didn't have the chance to, to ask to add, but um, part of the thing that they, they are looking for support for this kind of analysis because they, they don't have experience doing this type of analysis or even publishing so 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 i'm i'm, I'm sure that there is uh, loads of literature there on, on how to approach it it's it's i'm, I'm for me it's because I, I haven't done it for a while like i have to go through it but um yeah that, that was one of my my first questions and, and maybe maybe we can have a have a look at at it and, and see what you think. So I basically just read the the, the file, change some, some some factors. Would Eric, yeah. just yeah. a quick one. You know the package that you used further up, GG Gal or something. Yeah. G Galley. What what's that? I've never heard of that one before. <laughs> no, to be honest, I haven't used it yet, but I know it's it's good for the mixed models for for visualizations of interactions and things like that. Oh, so okay. I haven't I haven't got there yet, but uh, 
I think it's going to be useful at some point, I hope. So, yeah, this is the, the data, some, some NFS, and then I, I just basically change. Um, most of them are factors. The only really numerical continuous variable that I have at the moment is a, a, is a turbidity, which um, something I, I might change in the future. I, I might use the, the dilution, the actual value of the dilution, the 0 0.5, 0 0.25. It would probably be easier to do the, the, the analysis. And these are just the very initial plots that I did, like just for having an understanding how how they would look, and it's something like this. I don't know if it's already there. This is not the best graph, but I try to include probably too many things. Um, so yeah, we have the two bacteria isolates that they were testing, and then the different treatments and the positive. So basically they are trying to test against this. So this is not the best way of, of looking at this, but part of the success would be that any of these treatments would show a lower um, value of turbidity or microbial growth. So just by looking at this graph, it seems like probably the spirulina and green tea, they, they might, but uh, I mean, this this is not the best um, uh, figure to see it, but but it was like just to put out there what the table represents. So so four repeated measurements at each dilution checked at 24 and 48 hours, and then dilute it, each one diluted even more. So that's basically all what, what we are trying to see here. And um, yeah, I haven't done many more, just yeah, changing some some of the yeah, some of the axes. This is just trying to see if if if, if the data give us some information. There is something going on with this. this. This was supposed to be a control, a negative control to to inhibit the development, but it's growing more than the positive. So there's something. That, that happened um, in this in these readings or 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 yeah some, something to to look at and then we have each treatment with their measurement point so it's difficult to tell something from here I, I was thinking if maybe trying to my, my next thing would be like probably try to add uh, uplines to each treatment and see if they are following like any sort of of tendency and and more importantly compare it with these ones with the with the positive so again if they are equal or higher than the than the positive control is really not telling anything or it's really not saying that it could inhibit the the growth so I, I, I did start thinking about running a simple linear model and then try to see if there is a, the interaction. So but I think Ed mentioned this because the dilution and the treatment, they are related. So I think this is not the best approach. I need to use the, the, the mixed models and do the, the interactions, do, do that. Um, I don't remember the nomenclature, but I, I, I'm sure you know, like when you do the, the one and, and dash and, and the actual interaction between two of them. So, so that's something I recently thought about. And maybe just to finish what, what I was trying to do was to. Yeah, extract some more information by each treatment. And yeah, there's nothing 
particularly like obvious from from the from the data. So just like looking at that one, the the spirulina, that it was the only one that looked like a bit below the the the, the threshold. So I was just trying to understand how it was performing. So this at the beginning didn't make sense, but now it makes more sense because each time A, B, like B is more diluted than A and C is more diluted than B and, and so forth. So that's why the more diluted, the less effective, meaning that they are growing a bit more. So there's, there's this, there, these are definitely correlated. So again, something to consider for the, for the further analysis, which at, at the beginning, I, I I didn't, to, to be honest, because I didn't understand that that um, hierarchical um, dilution um, approach. So definitely, like it, it would have affected the analysis if if I would have done it um, the other way. And I think, yeah, but apart from more graphs like this, um, there's nothing really I have I have done in terms of of analysis. So I don't know. If you, Anyone has any other comment or or suggestion or have deal with this type of um, of of analysis? Yeah, sorry, Eric. Perhaps I just didn't uh, catch it. Um, this dilution was it? Uh, this hierarchical dilution did it happen once in a series, or is the dilution done after some period of incubation? Or is it just a one sample? Then you m prepare various dilutions and then put it for incubation. Yeah, that's the way I understand it. So they have like a literally like a like a tray, like physical tray, and they prepare the the first dilution in the first row of the tray. Then they dilute it in the second row, and then they keep diluting it until they get to the eighth row, and then they incubate it. And they do four repeats for each. Yes, thank you. So basically, it all comes down to, uh, you know, the, all these dilution levels. I think we can replace with uh, concentration, just as you did it. I, I can yeah. see no reason why. Yeah, then then it's just becoming one variable which. Uh, is sort of numerical, and we could try to treat it as continuous, but uh, but not necessarily that. Rather, the, an ordered factor approach could be better because this is not linear. And uh, you, you, you know what I think that uh, we can we can rather make it into an order factor. But at least we've got it. Uh, it's it's just one variable rather than the whole complicated system of dilution. Yeah, that's it. And, and to be honest, I, I didn't have the time to finish it, but th that was exactly what, what I was planning to do next. So instead of having um, the A, B, C and, and these things in the X axis, actually going for the value from for the 0.5 to 0.25 from, uh, so as you said, like, a, like an order factor, but a, an indication of the concentration um, that is not a treatment, it's just like a, Serially diluted uh, sample. And then the what what they are interested in is in finding out which dilution will will help. So that's what they they did it this this way. So this is a more concentrated one, and it's showing at least here, like um, you really need tests for this, but at least just, just having a like a first look, you could say that at this level of dilution, A, B, C, so one in two, one in four, one in eight, it's growing equally or even slightly less than 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 the control. And they are trying to find out that at with which level of dilution they they should stop. So probably if we if we see here like the D E E, I think this is 
one in 16, one in 32. It's becoming more diluted and then it's, it's presenting more growing, which is probably not what they are um, after. So, so what they are trying to find is which dilution and from which treatment will give you the lowest um, development rate. Yes, I understand. That, that seems to be a weak upward trend in the right panel of this graph, but how strong statistically it is, well, <laughs> not daring to say. <laughs> yeah, that's it. But then if you think about that, that it, each of them is, they are correlated with the other ones by design because they were literally the same sample diluted. So you would expect that, that correlation. So I don't know if the, the, the analysis should be, should take that in account. I'm, I'm still still not entirely sure how to do it, but uh, um, but yeah, that's what, what I'm planning to do uh, next. So yeah, but think that that was everything from from my. Side. So I don't know if I think most of us we have the session at five. So if there is anything else and want to take a break and then meet meet up later, would that be okay? Yeah, that sounds like a plan. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Eric. Thanks, Eric. Okay. Cheers. Okay. okay. Cheers. Bye. See you soon.